Here's the deal, folks. I'm Bart Winkler. This is Ryan Horvath. Each week, we've been doing picks forever. Little bit of a change, because we want to get some college in there. And historically, we've done all the NFL games, but mo- some of them we just do not care about at all. Yeah. So this year, on Thursdays and or Fridays, we will be giving you five college football picks, five NFL picks, and sometimes maybe dash in a little more when necessary. Yeah. Ryan Horvath, the host of BetMGM Tonight, myself, the host of The Bart Winkler Show. What background should I use for this? Should I use the Into the Winkler verse? Let me see. Or, that's what we got now. Okay. Or I have. Uh, another background this one <laughs> the pink one i think we got to go into then the... i throw my head up there see Woo. Whoa. i actually i kind of like this one i know but this isn't for the show this is for the podcast so i gotta go podcast okay well yeah just there you go all right college football week one is underway colorado i do want to mention that because they won last night yeah. Dion was trying to cover late by throwing the ball downfield um I think everything's the same about Colorado. The quarterback's great. The receivers are great. They're, they cannot run. They are bad on defense, and the coach is an idiot. And then he gets to the podium, and I, this is what I did. We were doing three hours, three hours on Colorado, bringing it up. Nobody cared. The minute I played a Dion cut about him being like, oh, we won, everyone's mad, phone calls light up, everyone wants to complain about Dion. Dion's got to stop making about himself Unless he's because they're this is a sub 500 team again. Yeah, they're the same team as they were last year. I think they're probably a four or five win team. Maybe they make a bowl game. That's probably the goal, to be honest with you. Like you said, Shador, really, really good. Really, really good. Um, Travis Hunter, best player in college football. Stinks that he's like there, like that dumpster fire of a program. Because, like, imagine getting to watch him play both sides of the ball. Wisconsin, (laughs) that'd be nice. Notre Dame for me. Uh, Georgia, anywhere else, just because like, I don't want to, and this year, like, I'm not a hater, dude. I'm, I was laughing when people were talking about Dion coaching the Cowboys or coaching any NFL team. Like those guys are making millions of dollars. They're not going to listen to that nonsense. And that nonsense is cute. Until yeah, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. Like he ain't leaving. No, no. He'll go, he'll go to, he'll go to like Florida state or another school before he goes to the pros. Yeah. Like, or you can okay, just take over a college what? university. What are, you, what are you doing? Like, I felt like my son, like, was was coaching that game. Like, I was watching him play Madden, and I'm sitting, like, above, like, right over him. Like, dude, why don't you just run the football and run out? Because he said clock? it's about getting first downs. Yeah, I mean, that was dumb. Like, he was, I get, he, he, he was throwing deep on first down. You get you get first down. You want first downs at the end of a game so you can run out the clock. Dion got a first down, and instead of running out the clock, Try to then get a first down. And you know what's the wildest thing about the whole situation, right? So, like, th- here, here's the thing, right? Okay, so um, you're running, like, shot plays. You're running streaks down the field. Rather than – I get maybe if you want to throw the ball and it's all about picking up first downs, then, like, scheme your guys open, right? Like, run the DJU offense where you're throwing little bubble screens, you know, short of the sticks maybe. You got great yak guys, obviously. But also in that situation, you really don't want to score when you think about it. You know, I mean, okay, trying to cover the spread, that's ridiculous as a head coach. You're not worried about spreads. Um, the FBI might have to get involved if, he, if if that happens again. And at the end of the day, like, or, you know, I sound like Giannis, but like, okay, so you go up 10 points, right? And your Being defense is this weekend. <laughs> is he really? Yeah. Oh, hey, congrats, Giannis. Big fan of the show. Giannis, uh, we'll see you at the Calderon Club <laughs> coming up on Friday. Send you a bottle of red for the wedding. But so, oh, I know this is like, you know, 0.01% chance this happens. But like there was also that percent that Reggie Miller was going to score nine points in 30 seconds or whatever it was, right. right? So you go up 10, 58 seconds to go. The back half of your defense, other than Travis Hunter, is atrocious. They throw a Hail Mary, they catch it, touchdown, they kick onside, they get it, right? Like, that's the dumb thing. You pick up the first down and then you take the knee. Did you not learn anything from Miami last season against Haynes King and Georgia Tech when Mario – the 30 years you've been in football? Like, what are you doing? 
That's why I'm out on Dion. He's a clown. I said it. Well, it's off my let's chat. take a look at games that are happening uh, this yeah. weekend. We can give you the Badger game. Dude, let's do it. Badgers play the Badger or the Badgers. Badgers. Well, the Badgers will Michigan bad. I have the ESPN lines. What what do you have? I've got them. I want to use your lines. Yeah, so let's use mine because I what I could do is I'll give a shout out to Betstamp. I'm a huge fan of their their work over there. So I could actually give like the best line, right? So if you want to bet Western Michigan, the best number you could get is plus 24 and a half over at BetMGM. I will give them a shout out because they pay me to. And then um you want to bet Wisconsin, you could get a better number elsewhere at 23 and a half. So we'll call Wisconsin a 23 and a half point favorite. Total in the game is 56 and a half. And uh, I might be on the wrong side here. Everybody I've heard likes the under in this game. I like the over, or I might like a team total over on Wisconsin. A lot of people I know, a lot of smart people are betting Western Michigan. I'm excited for Wisconsin this year, man. Now, I don't know if Luke Fickle is going to do in year two what he did at Cincinnati. I think year one at Cincinnati, they went four and eight. Then year two, they won double digit games. They went seven and five last season, but I'm excited. With Desmond Ritter. With De- yeah, with Desmond Ritter. And now you have Tyler Van Dyke. And I know a lot of people want to write him off, but he was beat up the last couple well, of years. Well, you can write him off, but he ain't writing back. He ain't writing back. He ain't writing back at all. Like he had injuries that people didn't even know about last year, though. <laughs> He had, I want to say, I heard that he had like a tear on his throwing hand. I don't know. It was crazy. But they're going to be able to run the ball with Chez coming back. Over 2,000 career yards. Gets a six-year of eligibility. And uh, you got Pauling coming back. I actually kind of like the receivers. I think Bryson Green will be a little bit better. The offensive line has four returning starters. Um, I like the over tonight. And I wouldn't bet Western Michigan. I think Wisconsin's going to be good this season. I think they're going to be good this season. And I think Nebraska is going to be good. Neither are going to win the Big Ten because there's two freaking NFL teams in Oregon and Ohio State. But I would bet the win total over on Wisconsin. If their schedule wasn't such crap, I do like Nebraska this year. But uh, Badgers over tonight. I think the Phil Longo offense is finally going to look like the offense that we thought it was going to look like. You know, the air raid. It doesn't work when you got Tanner Mordecai and his noodle arm, but Tyler Van Dyke could push the ball down the field. Two years ago, we were talking about him like he might be a top 10 pick, and uh, I think he's going to ball out this year. Hope, fingers crossed. I said that about Graham Mertz like three years ago too. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think anecdotally I could say either one of these things, and Badgers fans would agree with me. Anecdotally I could say it just feels like in these early season games the Badgers don't like win as by as much as they should. But yeah. then I could also say – well, the Badgers always destroy these teams early, and like I, I don't, I don't know which one, I don't know which one's true because they used to do that, and then now it feels like they don't. Badgers. The reason I love the college football playoff the most, the new expanded one, is because the Badgers' season always ended week three when they lost to BYU or Illinois or you know one of these teams that are bad. So now at least I can pretend like they have a, ch- a, sh- a chance longer. I will take the Badgers to go out there tonight and cover. Yeah, get some points. Friday night, Camp Randall, college is back in session. The student section, per my sources, is already filling up now. So nobody will be unhappy about the situation tonight. No screenshots will be sent. So let's go. Badgers to cover the enormous spread. We have one more uh, one more thing on that. Also, I know that, like a lot of people are going to fade to Wisconsin because of what you just said, but like let's remember this isn't your <laughs> this isn't your Paul Chris Wisconsin yeah. team, right? This is this is uh this is Luke Fickle year two baby and you know you want to know I used to defend Paul Chris I can't do it anymore and you want to know why I can't do it let me read you um this stat read line. let me read let me it. let me read you this real quick tell me what quarterback this is completed seventy two percent of his passes last season twenty touchdowns three picks even though he played behind a terrible offensive line what quarterback do you think that was in college mm-hmm. twenty touchdowns three picks completed seventy percent of his passes. I don't have the slightest idea. Well, it was, uh, come on, think real hard. Why Graham does Paul Mertz? It was Graham Mertz. Those were his stats with Billy Napier, who's on the hot seat this year at Florida. Like, why did he? <laughs> you, you were like, you were dude. like not prepared for me not to know. That's why he's out of here. Fickle's in. I don't care. Give me the Badgers tonight. Woo! So you're taking them to cover? Yeah, I'm going to take them to cover too. I'm going to put like 50 bucks on it. Not your not your typical Ryan Horvath bet, but I mean, I'm a fan. You know, what is I'm that, is that one one tenth of a unit? 
yeah, I'm just going to bet all my teams this weekend, except for maybe one. Spoiler alert. All right. On Saturday morning, number one, Georgia, number 14, Clemson. What do you have for the line? So this one's really interesting, man, because I have not heard one one person make the case uh, for Clemson this week. I have. Yeah, me too. It went from 14 down to 12, though. So money's coming in on Clemson. The guy, uh, the guy so- who advocated for Clemson was Don Munson, the voice of the Tigers, was on my show. And he says Clemson's going to win. Win? Yeah. Well, shoot. If you like that, dude, it is plus 375 on the money line. So, Well, this again, this is the play-by-play guy for the Tigers. You know what, man? I don't think it's crazy. I bet that. the line 12? Yeah, it's 12. I bet them plus 14. I'd still bet them at 12. Georgia has 33 new dudes on the roster. Carson Beck's awesome. He's probably the number one quarterback in the draft next year. But you lose Brock Bowers. You lose McConkie. The defense will be good. And I know we say this every year about Georgia, but it's a young secondary. And I'm a little worried after this offseason. They have to lead college football in moving violations. How many DWIs, like, like in, like, that's like not a joke or anything. Like, this needs to be, I think, yeah. DWI, DUI in prison, dude. Never get your license back ever again. We got to do something about this. It's been ridiculous. It's always been ridiculous, but uh, another young athlete killed tragically. Uh, today while we were before we record this but like georgia man like what's kirby running over there what kind of programs he running it's becoming like urban meyer florida not that bad yet but uh i i don't know i i think if ever like there's a year to bet against georgia it might be this year that said they'll win 11 games but i do think somebody beats them i don't know it's if it's clemson but i think they keep this close the clemson defense is going to be real good i'll take clemson as an underdog uh the play-by-play man you know Got to me enough. I talked to him this week and he does basketball, baseball, and football. And I always like to ask broadcasters broadcasting questions. Yeah. Who was the guy I talked to? I think when I talked to Noah Eagle, because I always like to be like, I've done play by play also, which oh, I have. Yeah. But I like, I, I go, what sport is there a sport that you can't call? I asked Noah that, and we agreed it was hockey. Hockey's impossible. Can't call hockey. It's impossible. So I asked Don, I said, what sport do you feel the most like Don Munson? And he's like, well, I've never got – people always ask me what I like the boat best, but never what makes me feel the most like myself. And he said basketball. He said basketball. Yeah. Same Don here. Dude, I always love to call him basketball. Basketball is the best because there's always something going on. Football, you got to be like – all right, I got to call this formation and the plays real quick. And then the guy ran into the middle and I don't know who tackled him. And yeah, ay, ay, ay. yeah, you need like a spotter. You're trying to get Jersey numbers. Now, if you're calling like an NFL game, it's a different story. I would assume or like a college football game, but yeah, like calling like, you know, St. Rita against Mount Carmel on a Friday night. is kind of tough. Um, I always, I agree. I always loved calling basketball, man. I would get really, really into it. Oh and God. Weirdly, weirdly, I liked baseball. Johnson! Four three. You can act like every three is the parting of the sea. Even though there's like a bunch of downtime baseball, I always like because you get to be a storyteller. I would just make up random stuff though. I'd be like, you know, Jameson at the mound or Jameson at the plate hitting 287 this season. He's going to Iowa next year. He's a little torn between where he wants to where he wants to head. It's like parents listening. A firefighter, you know. Uh, His mother Sharon. Great, great at the bake sale. No, I, I don't know. But baseball. doing doing loco play by play is a different animal because you're not doing the broadcast like you normally would. You have to do the broadcast for their parents who listen to it later. Yeah. To hear if their son's name was called. Oh God. And if you say anything wrong or you get something wrong, oh that that was the worst. This I'll- is when I would do PA and somebody would come up to the booth to tell me I'm saying a name wrong. I go. This is how your coach told me to say it, man. You go talk to the coach. I hated PA. I, I hated it. It was not worth the money, in my opinion. It was just oh, it never fun. is. I've never, never. Well, I've never made good money doing it. That was like twenty bucks a game for me. Um, I only got a hundred to do forward Madison. Really? Yeah, I drove out there. Hmm. I didn't even cover the gas. It did, I, by the time I had gas and then food on the way, that's what I mean. It wasn't worth making like forty bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I also like um, 
I don't like this about Clemson, but what's interesting about Clemson is the whole like college is doing things a certain way, mm-hmm. not Clemson. And I talk again, I talked to this guy, he goes, they tried to get recruits, they tried to use the transfer portal. Did they? No, they did. That's Devils- what the guy told me. And he's like, they just they couldn't compete with the big, you know, the big money. They couldn't. Come on. Nah, this- who, who is this? Steve Homer True? Uh, like, this guy sounds like a huge homer here because Dabo openly has said he's not going to use the transfer portal, which I think is a huge mistake. But, yeah, I, I feel like they might be a sleeping giant in the ACC because everybody wants to write them off. And huh, I'm going to keep saying that until Gino wins MVP this year. But, like, Cade Klubnick is a five-star. He just doesn't look like one. You have Lincoln Riley's brother calling the plays. It's now year two. Will Shipley's gone, but I like their other back, Phil Maffa, and he's back. I think he's actually the better running back. The problem with Clemson, though, on the offensive side of the ball, they haven't had a receiver that could create separation. They haven't had, like, that T. Higgins, Sammy Watkins, you know, type guy in, like, four years. I do like their receivers a little bit more this year. So I think they at least hang within two scores. So I like Clemson plus 12. I don't know if they win the game, though. I'd probably pick Georgia there. Yeah, I'll take Clemson to cover, Georgia to win. Yeah. Um, also at that same time, Penn state and West Virginia, which is getting more attention than it should because Pat McAfee's from West Virginia. So they went to do the show in West Virginia, but it's going crazy. And yeah. I think that like with West Virginia having some sense of importance that maybe they don't feel like they've had and a Penn state team that always lets people down might be ripe for an upset here, Horby. So, you know, I know a lot of people that like Penn State. I Obviously, a lot of people liked West Virginia this summer because they got seven and a half. Yeah, it's down to seven and a half, eight in some spots. Um, it opened at 11 and a half, and I hammered West Virginia. I think West Virginia is going to be better than some people project them to be. They won nine games last season. They bring back their starting quarterback, Garrett Green, which, you know, he's got to limit the turnovers, but he's an explosive play waiting to happen. Uh, the defense kind of just is what it is. But Penn State, I do think that they're going to be better this year than they were last year on the offensive side of the ball because they bring back both backs, Katron Allen, Nicholas Singleton. They both kind of had down years. They had down years because everybody just stacked the box because Drew Aller, another five-star quarterback, they like didn't trust him. He didn't throw the ball down the field for whatever reason. I don't know if you remember the Michigan game. He threw for 77 yards in that game. 77 yards. Is that when Michigan but, threw five passes? Yeah, that, that was the game, remember? Uh, but – I, they they got to be better. Okay, so I don't like James Franklin, but he's not a bad coach. Every year he wins 9, 10 games, and he beats the teams he's supposed to beat. He just can't beat Ohio State, and he can't beat Michigan. This year, like, he at least has to contend because they paid Kotal Nicky, Andy Kotal Nicky, the offensive coordinator from Kansas, $7.1 million to go there and call plays because the offense has lacked explosive plays the last couple of years. So there is a good chance I'm wrong here in Penn State rolls, but – James Franklin on the road, more than a touchdown favorite. I liked West Virginia at plus 10 and a half. I'm still going to play him at seven and a half. I'm cheering for the upset. I hate Penn State, so I, I like cheering against them. Yeah, me too. Uh, I'm going to take um, – I mean, every time that I've – you think about Penn State, do they ever – when it's a big game for Penn State, do they ever like – No. Hey, Penn State won that game that was a big game for them. Yeah, like handily too. No, never. never. So I'm going to go with West Virginia as well. Yeah. Uh, later that night, your boys, oh, the fighting Catholics, <laughs> Notre Dame heads to college you know the Station. Day, huh? I was saying I was uh, I was in an, in, in, I was doing some Spanish there. To what do we got for the spread? Three? Yeah, it's up to three right now, dude. And Number seven, Notre Dame, a dog at Texas A and M minus the three. Horvat, you are a Notre Dame super fan. Mm-hmm. Your thoughts? Yeah, I bet them under 10 and a half wins this season. I think they're going to be really, really good, but I just kind of got to see it to believe it. Like the Badgers every year, you know, it's like you kind of just know your team, right? And I just kind of think this is a 10-win team. I think they lose this game. A real. Let me rephrase that. though. Originally, I thought they were going to lose this game, and I bet Texas A&M on the money line because it was a pick, minus 110. And I thought Notre Dame was going to be favored in this game. But then, I mean, their offensive line is young, and they already lose Joe Alt, and then the guy that was supposed to replace him got hurt this spring. And you have Mike Elko taking over as head coach for Texas A&M. 
two years ago, Texas A&M had the best recruiting class in college football history. The problem was Jimbo couldn't coach him. So they bought out Jimbo Fisher for like $5 billion because he sucks. Uh, most overrated coach in college football history. They bring in Mike Elko, who spent a year at Notre Dame. I actually wanted Notre Dame to can Brian Kelly, that murderer, and give Mike Elko the job. They didn't. So I just feel like I have this one all figured out. Mike Elko goes back. Well, the game's in Texas A&M, but, you know, takes over. Yeah. And also, the other storyline here, Notre Dame went in the portal and got Leonard Riley. But the problem is pretty cool. Well, no, it's really cool. But who was his head coach last year at Duke? Riley Leonard. Jesus, Leonard Riley. I just said I'm tired. But his head coach. I don't know know what we were talking about. His head coach. Riley Leonard's head coach last year was Mike Elko at Texas or at at Duke. You know, he got the job. He comes over. Want to do this game over? Should we start this one over? No, it's just like everything tells you that Texas A&M is the side. But at plus three, I think Notre Dame is going to cover. So I had to buy back some Notre Dame. Yeah, that, was- that's something that I can't – when it's plus three, it's like it's a – isn't that the Horvath special to take the – well, no. Yeah. you would. It's plus three. You think Notre Dame is going to cover? It's three. So I, like, I, can't, I can't imagine looking at a game and being like, oh, they're going to – they're only going to lose by one or two. I mean, I if you give me – yeah, you're looking for key numbers. So, like, if you gave me a three and a half, that's what I want with the number. But I guess that's why you're on a gambling show, and yeah. I'm just some guy that, you know, truckers listen to when it's the only station that comes in. Well, I listen to it every night, too, on my drive home. <laughs> but, yeah, then if they kick a field goal to beat you, then you get the hook. You you you, you, pull, you're, you, you get the win. You don't push. But, uh, yeah, all right. So, in English, Riley Leonard, we're all excited as Notre Dame fans, who was the quarterback at Duke for Mike Elko, comes to Notre Dame. They pay him a bunch of money, right? But he's starting behind an inexperienced offensive line with better receivers and a really good defense. But he's going against his former head coach, Mike Elko, who knows everything about him. Defensive genius, has a really good defense at AM. And also, AM has a five star quarterback, Connor Wigman. Remember the first five games of last season, they were good because he was healthy. Then he got mm-hmm. hurt and all hell broke loose. So that's why all the money came in on AM and they went from being you know, a pick to now three point favorites at home. But Notre Dame has a lot of talent, man. It's just like Ken Marcus Freeman coached them last year. We all remember the 10 men on the field. I kind of got to see it to believe it. So I think A&M wins, but I'll take Notre Dame plus three because I'm, I'm taking them in the Badgers and I'm taking Green Bay next Thursday or Friday. So just sticking with my hometown teams. Got to do it, especially to start a season. Sunday night, USC, LSU, Game's being played in Vegas for some reason. Yeah. Um, this is why we talked to Horvat about college. I don't, I'm just going to take whatever. I, oh, I'm going to go Texas A&M for the picks. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Because I think people need to remember that A&M stands for agricultural and mechanical. And so yeah. I think true to their name, they're going to plow through Notre Dame. I do too. And, but I, and and uh, destroy them like a machine. Kind of do too. And Johnny Manziel is going to be the guest picker at College Game Day, so he'll be at Kyle Field as well. You, uh, USC versus LSU. It's going to be weird this year. Big Ten. Yeah, this hey. is a Big Ten game. This is a Big Ten SEC game that people love to see. And it's in Vegas, Big Ten country. Yeah, which is weird, dude. So this was my biggest bet this summer. I bet this game in July. It was a game of the year, and it opened up USC plus six and a half. And I almost had to take out a small loan or something out of my 401k to get enough down on USC at plus six and a half. And I still like USC at plus four. I think USC is actually going to win this game. I bet LSU's under at 10. It's down to nine and a half on their win total. I just kind of have Brian Kelly all figured out. The defense, I don't expect the defense just to improve in one year. And you can say the same thing about USC. So, okay, it's a shootout. And you were telling me that USC is six and a half points worse. I I just, I don't know, man. I know that they lose Caleb Williams, but I think Miller Moss is going to be really good. And maybe even in the Heisman conversation towards the end of the year, if they're an eight, nine win team, which you probably have to be, you know, to be in that conversation. We'll see with the expanded playoff. Um, But I like some of the guys on defense for LSU. Like Harold Perkins is going to be, probably a top 15, top 10 pick. 
Oh, I know. Well, of them. Yeah. Yeah. But like, they don't just have them rushing the quarterback again this year. They came out and said that they're going to be like dropping them back in coverage. They want to play them like a traditional linebacker. And then you lose Jaden Daniels, Heisman quarterback and Nesmeyer, Garrett Nesmeyer, their, their backup or their new starting quarterbacks. Probably yeah. What a cool be- matchup. This would have been, I didn't even realize that. Like last year, Caleb against Jaden. Yeah, exactly. Number one and two, and now it's like, I guess this is on a Sunday night. Yeah, I think, but I think USC is actually going to win this game, dude. I'm going to fade Brian Kelly in this spot. I think it's going to be a shootout. I would only bet the over. But I mean, like, look at everything LSU lost. It's just, I know USC lost some too, but they have really good skill position players. LSU lost Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas, Jaden Daniels. Like, all three of those guys could legitimately win Rookie of the Year this year. So, give me USC plus the points. When you got this many unknowns on a neutral field, I think it's going to be a field goal game. So, the five games we got, we're both taking Wisconsin. Oh, hell yeah. We're both taking Clemson to cover. Yes, we are. And maybe even win. I'm taking West Virginia to win, and so are you. I am too, yeah. I'm taking Texas A&M to win and cover. I'm going to take Notre Dame plus three. I think A&M, I think A&M wins. I just think three is outrageous. Three points was way too many, and I'm a homer, so we'll go against each other on this one, yeah. And then I said I was going to do whatever you were doing here. <laughs> we're taking USC, and we're taking them pretty big. If, if they lose this game by more than – well, I got six and a half. If they lose this game by more than seven points, you might not see me next week. I might be in witness protection. Do you got any other uh, games that are worth mentioning? Yeah, yeah. Let me just – I'll rattle off some picks. All right. Um, I also, I also have a college football show oh, on Bart, Saturdays, Bart, Bart, come nine a.m. to ten a.m. Eastern time, eight a.m. to nine a.m. I believe. Then does it air on twelve fifty a.m. The Fan in Milwaukee? I don't think that it does. I think it might, but it should. Oh, well, I probably should know that, but I don't know. No, I'm pro- yeah, because uh, they run they run BetQL on the weekends instead of Infinity. I always was mad because I was never on the air. Oh, really? I guess I am on there. So yeah, check it out. I like Oklahoma tonight, minus 42. I actually think that Venables has that defense looking pretty damn good this year. Uh, I like Stanford. I love Stanford tonight. I bet them plus 10. As I look right now, they're nine-point dogs against TCU at home. Whole new era of football for Stanford as they uh, enter the ACC. I like the under in Maryland-UConn, under 45 and a half. I also like UConn to cover. Maryland doesn't even know who their quarterback is, and the game kicks off in like 22 hours. That's never a good sign. I love Syracuse. Not so much on the season, but I love them against Ohio, minus 17. I think they're going to blow them out. How do you love Syracuse against Ohio? How can that even be? Because they got Kyle McCord now, and I know he wasn't great at Ohio State, but uh, I think he's going to be pretty good at Syracuse. And they spent a bunch of money this season in the portal. I like, oh, here's a great one. Miami, Ohio, plus three against Northwestern. They're going to beat Northwestern. Northwestern's coming back down to earth this year. Is this at their new stadium? Yeah, and then I like uh, Miami to beat Florida. I might be wrong on that one, but I like Cam Ward, and he's the quarterback at Miami now. And they got Damian Martinez from Oregon State, too. And uh, Billy Napier's on the hot seat. And I bet Graham Mertz enough in my life. I'm fading Graham Mertz until the day I die. But like I said, he was pretty good last year. So I think Paul Chris just sucks. I think I'm going to retire the shirt. The collar's too low. Yeah, I hate when that happens. You know, my wife. I keep adjusting it. Yeah, that once a collar does that, the, the shirt's just got to go. But I, I don't know that I would retire the shirt. You could always use it. The like shirt that. would be sweet if it was a long sleeve hoodie. Yeah, just a shirt. I don't know, though. Even those then. I don't know. My my wife is, like, obsessed with hanging my stuff up. Look at this. This isn't even a V-neck. This is, like, a cursive U-neck. Yeah, yeah. Kind of makes you look like a slob a little bit. I know. It's, it's, See, that's what sucks for me. I have to be on camera every night. I miss the old days when we would just roll out of bed, you know, sometimes half in the can, sometimes in the can during the show, especially the draft show. Oh, always drunk. I don't even know who my co-host is tonight, and I'm doing the show from home. I might go get a case of Guinness right now. I'm not kidding you. I saw McAfee do it, and everybody, like, praised it. Like, if I did that, I would be thrown in prison in my day. <laughs> McAfee was just... You know what? I mean, he was hammered. He was drunk. He um, was hammered. Ryan Horvath. He we're gonna do college picks, five games, and NFL five games each week, right here. It's gonna be fun. Always good to see you. Hey, you too, man. Bye, Horvath. Goodbye. <laughs>